Guten Tag! It's time for Oktoberfest. Now, I know we're about a week away from the official start of Oktoberfest, but in honor of the world's largest beer festival, we put together a project. This is a three-part breathalyzer and BAC lager that Sara and I put together. The BAC lager is built on the particle photon with a wearable shield. This is all attached to a pint glass shaped piece of felt and powered by a USB battery. This should hopefully last for more than a few beers. The front of the pint glass contains 16 colored LEDs in eight different levels that light up based on the wearer's blood alcohol content, or BAC. We estimate BAC with an alcohol sensor that detects alcohol in the air as you breathe on it, and this has all been attached to a lapel flower. There's also a small buzzer that alerts the user every minute or so. Then you have to breathe into the sensor and push this little button in order to make it stop buzzing at you. Once you push the button, it records the BAC and posts this data to data.sparkfun, all thanks to the Wi-Fi built into the photon. For fun, we can display the most recent BAC reading using a microview that's been attached to the front of my bow tie. The alcohol sensor is an interesting piece of technology. In it is a thin layer of tin oxide. We can use a resistive heating element to get that tin oxide layer up to a particular temperature. Then, as alcohol molecules in the air interact with that tin oxide, the resistance actually decreases. So, we can put a known resistance coming out of the other end of the tin oxide layer. And as alcohol molecules surround that tin oxide and interact with it, the voltage actually goes up, and we can read that voltage by using an analog to digital converter, say, connected to the photon, and read that, do some math, and calculate the person who breathed on its BAC. We're here in downtown Boulder, outside of a local authentic German beer garden. I'm gonna get a couple of beers, or see if they have one of those nice big boots that I can drink. We'll take readings of my BAC every minute or so after that to see what that looks like, and we'll post that data on data.sparkfun. Now, I'm a lightweight and I don't have much in my stomach, so this should go pretty quickly. Shall we get started? I found myself a boot, which is 32 ounces of pure frothy goodness. Now, let's get an initial reading, which should read 0.000% BAC. To do that, I'm just gonna breathe into my flower here, push a button, and then that should post it to data.sparkfun. All right, there's the first one. Oh boy. Now I gotta come up for a breath every now and then. <sighs> oh, the things I do for science. Prost! Prost! I've been practicing, it's pretty terrible still. I know, I know, I'm getting bubbles, that's not good. First reading, and I tried my best to clear some of the alcohol out of my mouth, so it shouldn't be just what's in my lungs at the time. Now, it might be a little high still. Let's see if I can find this button. 0.037. Now, I still think that's a lot of alcohol that's still in my mouth and throat. That should go back down, and then it'll rise up as the alcohol still enters my blood. Yeah. <laughs> While we're waiting, let's go over some fun facts. Now, these are a bit sobering here. In 2013, 10,076 people died in the U.S. from alcohol-related driving crashes, and this amounts to about 28 people per day. How does this happen? Well, let's look at the science of how alcohol actually enters the bloodstream and affects your brain functions. The alcohol we drink is composed of two carbon atoms, six hydrogen atoms, and one oxygen atom. These are arranged into a molecule which we know as ethanol, or ethyl alcohol. Oh, here we go, it's beeping at me. Gotta give this a shot. All right, what am I at? 0 0.027. 0 0.02, okay. As we thought, it's gonna go back down as the alcohol's cleared from my throat, but it should rise back up as the alcohol enters into my bloodstream. Now, let's see how that happens. For many tasty beverages like beer, we produce ethanol by a process known as fermentation. This happens by introducing yeast into a liquid mixture that contains glucose, which is a type of simple syrup. Simple, simple, simple <laughs> The yeast actually eats the sugar and then poops out carbon dioxide and ethanol. This gives the beer alcohol and its carbonation. When you consume alcohol, it's absorbed into the bloodstream in the stomach and the small intestines, and it travels to different organs where it's absorbed by tissues in the various organs. 
0.02. Cool, I'm blowing up 0.02. Specifically in the brain, the alcohol alters the levels of neurotransmitters, which are used to send signals throughout the body, and it affects things like thought process, your behavior, and even emotions. The neurotransmitters that get affected can cause things like sluggish movement, slurred speech, and reduced reaction time, which really comes into play when you're trying to do something like drive a car. At the same time that these neurotransmitters are being altered, things like dopamine are increased, which gives you that sense of euphoria. You actually get a sense of pleasure out of having alcohol affect your brain. To get rid of the alcohol in your body, your kidneys, your liver, and your lungs all work together to remove it from your system. For example, the kidneys work to extract the alcohol and then you just puts it in urine. You basically just pee it out. The liver breaks down the alcohol using enzymes into acetic acid, which can then be used to create fatty acids to be stored in the body. Finally, the lungs can extract alcohol from the bloodstream, which it puts into the air and you exhale it out. And this is exactly how our little alcohol sensor here works. 0.03. <laughs> I mentioned BAC earlier, and that stands for blood alcohol content. And it's a unit of measure that's the weight of alcohol per unit of volume of blood. And you can extract blood and measure that, and you can also get it through something like a breathalyzer test. BAC is expressed as a percentage, and in fact, something like 0.1% is really, really high, and you can even feel the effects of alcohol at 0.01% BAC. As the BAC in your body increases, you get some various effects that happen. For example, at 0.03 to 0.06, you get happiness, relaxation, decreased inhibition, and you also get a little bit of decreased concentration. At 0.06 to 0.1, that's 0.1% BAC, you get euphoria, decreased reasoning, and a little bit of loss of peripheral vision. You notice you can only see in like this little circular area. Then at 0.1 to 0.2, you get overexpression, boisterousness, and you get a little bit of your staggering and slurred speech, and this thing's beeping at me, so I have to do this again. 0.044. Oh, we're blown to 0.04, all right. At 0.2 to 0.3, that's a lot of alcohol in your blood at this time. You're getting nausea, vomiting, loss of consciousness. This is where you start having blackouts and not really remembering what's going on. And then at 0.3 to 0.4, you get stupor, periods of unconsciousness. That's really not good. And then 0.4 and over, this is where things bad things start to happen. In this case, your central nervous system begins to shut down. You could slip into a coma. You're having problems breathing. Your heartbeat starts beating irregularly or possibility of even death at this point. That's when you really have alcohol poisoning and seeking medical attention is a good idea. Hey, there we go. Whoa! <laughs> what am I blowing? 0.073. Oh, that, that spiked pretty hard there. Having a few brews in celebration of Germany's famous Folkfest is uh, certainly make for some good times. But if you do decide to imbibe, make sure you can get home safely and do it in a responsible manner. Prost! Wow. <laughs>